Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to tackle one of my favorite subjects, which is the creative use of sepia tone. Now, a sepia tone is a particular type of a duotone image, and this is where you're using colors instead of just pure black and white to make a new type of black and white photo. This technique was traditionally used in older style printing, and it really evokes sort of a classic feel. Now, we're not going to do a duotone in the strict sense of printing, but rather we're going to do creative uses of these to really get the precise look that we're going for. You can use any picture you want, or if you have our copy of our book, Understanding Adobe Photoshop CS4, just follow the download link and you can download the photo we're using today. Here we go. So I've got the picture open and there are several ways to make a duotone image. Now, people used to use older techniques like the channel mixer, and you'll see channel mixer down here, and there are presets for black and white, such as an infrared photo, or you'll see here that we have other ones for doing a red filter or an orange filter, and in this case, the red filter is particularly nice. This is simulating a traditional photographic filter where a red filter was attached to the lens, which would help filter out some of those red values, and that's why you're seeing that really high contrast there. Notice how the sky is absolutely popping and the rocks have lots of precise detail. Well, this is a nice adjustment and this works great if you're using older versions of Photoshop. But if you have Photoshop CS3 or CS4, I want you to try using the black and white adjustment layer instead. Let's go ahead and get rid of this one. And we're just going to go ahead and discard that channel mixer. And what I want to use is the black and white adjustment layer. It's right here, and we add that. You'll notice that it too has presets, including the ability to do things like a high contrast red, and that really did a nice job of popping those blue skies. Notice there, by playing with the filtered values, you really get an interesting mix, and this is because a black and white photo isn't simply the absence of color. Rather, it's a balance of how much black ink is being printed based upon the color values in the original picture. Simply stripping away all saturation does not make an attractive black and white or sepia tone photo. Now that's looking great and I could play with this if I want. A cool thing is, is we can actually come on in here, click on this little hand icon and then come into the object here and drag. And notice that the sky is being affected by the cyan value. So if I want to put the sky a little bit brighter, I could just drag that up and that's affecting the sky. So that gives you greater control. You want to go after those rocks, just click on them, and notice that those are being impacted mostly by magenta. Come down here and click in the vegetation, and that's being affected by the yellow. So if you like how the presets get you pretty close, that's great, but then you can actually just click inside the color and modify it. The key there is to click on that little hand icon right up top here. This allows you to click and drag within the image to actually modify the values so you can go after particular tonal ranges. Here we're affecting the blues. Now if you looked at that original picture, you probably wouldn't have thought blue was the key value there, but it is indeed affecting that black and white conversion. Let's go after the sky there and darken that down just a bit, and I'm going to go ahead and pop the whites there a little more. And I'm quite happy with that black and white conversion. It's very dramatic, it's doing a nice job. Now, Let's go ahead and create the sepia tone and then add some other elements to really finish this picture out. If you click the tint button up here, you get the ability to tint the image, and by default, it automatically has a sepia tone value assigned. Now, you can use that value or click and change it to get what you want, and that does a pretty good job there. I'm going to go with something in that range there, and I like how that's looking, but that's not the only way to actually do this. Let's quickly uncheck that tint for a moment, and instead, I'm going to add a gradient map. Now, a gradient map is a type of adjustment layer, and it maps colors to the image. To do this, we're going to take this nice one here, which is this copper color, and we're going to map that to the image, and set this to soft light mode. And you see it does a nice job, sort of a solarization, or maybe hue mode, and color, and you get these nice effects. Now, that's doing sort of a metallic look, and that's pretty effective. If you don't want something that dramatic, you can just turn that off, or you can discard it. We also have other ways of making a sepia tone. 
if we go over to our actions panel and we click the submenu here, you'll see we have image effects. Within image effects, we have some great sepia tone actions. So what I'm going to do first is run the sepia toning to a layer and click play. And it goes ahead and creates a nice version for me. And that's really cool. What it did is a slightly higher contrast, black and white, made a copy of that there. And it then used an adjustment here, a custom hue saturation adjustment to really colorize the image very dramatically. You could have done that with the black and white adjustment command, but this is just a little more refined and it's a great starting point. Now that's looking really good. What I want to do is add a little bit of texture. So to do this, we're going to add a new layer above filled with 50% gray and then apply our texture. Let's go ahead and add a new layer and I'll press shift delete to call up the fill dialog box. We're going to use 50% gray because that's a nice middle gray that we can easily blend. Let's load the default colors of black and white by pressing D and then we're going to choose filter, noise, add noise. We'll do the monochromatic option, a little bit of Gaussian and pump that up and you see we get a nice grain structure. Now let's soften that a bit by choosing filter, blur, Gaussian blur and we'll run a blur value of two pixels on that. That gives us a nice thick grain that's very gentle. Let's go ahead and blend that. I'll go ahead and try the soft light mode and lower the opacity just a bit. And I really like how that's putting a little bit of grain and aging into that sky texture. It doesn't look as flat anymore. It actually has some noise in there that's very evocative of older style film. Now let's finish this off with a power window or a vignette. And to do that, we're going to toss a gradient on top. Click on the adjustment layer and simply add a new filler adjustment here. We'll use gradient and we're going to take the default black to white gradient. But instead of it being linear, we'll change it to radial. And what you want is black at your edges and white in the middle. You can adjust the angle and scale to taste. And when you're satisfied, click OK. And here's where blending modes come in again. Simply drop that to multiply mode and the white areas drop out and we'll lower that opacity down. And what we have now is a nice darkening towards the edge of our picture. Now, we're just about done, but I want to finalize this out a bit. And to do that, let's make a copy of the image. If we go over to the history panel, we can click this little camera icon here to make a snapshot, or better yet, just click this other window to create a new document. That automatically made a copy of the current image, leaving the one behind and everything here. Let's go ahead and flatten things down to make this a little simpler now. I'm going to choose Layer, Flatten Image. And what I want to do now is go back to the Actions palette and we're going to play with some of our effects here. We'll go to Frames and what we're going to do is do a rough edge. Now these edge frames want you to be in 8-bit mode. So we'll drop this down to 8 bits per channel. That works great. And now we can go ahead and run that spatter frame action and click play. There we go. And it created a nice rough edge for me. The original, of course, is still right there down below. And there you have it, a creative sepia tone. There are other edge effects you could play with. And that's the key to getting the most out of Photoshop. All we did there is we took basic techniques like adjustment layers, filters, and blend modes and combined them together to get advanced techniques. And that's how you really understand Adobe Photoshop. You simply take the basic techniques and combine them to get more powerful results. My name is Rich Harrington. I invite you to check out our resource blog at rastervector.com. And while you're there, be sure to download some of our back episodes. If you enjoy the podcast, we'd really appreciate it if you could post a review over at iTunes or the Adobe Media Player. Thanks again.